Hi dear parents, teachers, students, and fellow mathematicians. Today we explore the wonderful Pythagorean theorem. Let's jump right in. So who is Mr. Pythagoras? Well, Mr. Pythagoras was Pythagoras of Samos, and Samos is an island in Greece. He was born in 570 BC, which is before Christ. He lived until 490 BC, so he lived for about 80 years. He was a philosopher and a religious teacher. He was very well educated. He left Samos, apparently because of tyrannical rule, to go live in Italy. Now, on his way to Italy, he also traveled to Egypt, and apparently his exposure to Egyptian culture really helped him in terms of his way of life but it also helped him in terms of his mathematics. So he was a musician, he played the lyre. Now you can see the instrument uh, depicted on the right to help people who were sick. He had a strong belief that musical instruments and musical notes were reflected with numbers. Uh, and he also believed that numbers had personalities and genders like male, female, and perhaps the number 10 had a, a personality based on triangulation. Um, it was the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is incredible. Um, he explored relationships with numbers, with geometry, and with triangles specifically. And he is the founder of Pythagoreanism, which is why he was kicked out of Samos and decided to go on his exodus to Italy. So his followers were called Mathematicoi, and they had no possessions, they were vegetarians, and strongly believed in certain symbols and that the reality and the cosmos were mathematical, so that the universe was made of numbers. They had a very strong interest in astrology and astronomy as well. It was a secret society, which is why there's not many accounts of Mr. Pythagoras himself um, based on his own writings, but mostly it was passed on from generation to generation and from word of mouth. So his students are the people who recollected uh, what he came up with. And the Pythagorean secret society was called Pythagoras' semicircle, and they studied geometry and shapes deeply. So that's for your history of Mr. Pythagoras himself. Now for the actual theorem, Pythagoras' theorem is actually quite straightforward. It says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Very famous words. And as you see here, c is the long side. And so this suggests that if you were to take the long side and square it, it would be equal to the other two sides added together and squared. Now the process of squaring is multiplying by itself. So if you were to do C times C, it would be equal to A times A plus B times B. So this is Pythagoras' theorem. And the most common geometric proof to this, which you can see here, is to draw squares because A times A is the same as the area uh, of a square, which would be A by A. So if you take the short side A and you make a square and you take another short side B and you make another square there and you take the last side, which is the long side C, and you draw a square here, you'd actually realize, geometrically speaking, that the areas of the two short sides squared together would be equal to the area of the big square. And you can see with numbers here, for example, with the 3, 4, 5 triangle, that 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, and when you do 16 plus 9, you get 25, and 25 would be the area of a 5 by 5 square. Now, there are many proofs to the Pythagorean theorem. There's a proof here with a trapezium, and so if you were to try and find the area of the trapezium, using the average of the base A and the base B, you'd be able to prove the Pythagorean theorem. It's quite involved. I'm not going to get into this proof today. There is also a proof with squares here. If you rearrange the squares, and if you'd like to do this, you can pause the video right now, and you can rearrange the squares in part A to see that they fit with part B. This is quite a famous proof. It's a Euclidean proof. And in fact, there's so many proofs to the Pythagorean theorem. It is the most proven theorem in mathematics. It's the most famous statement in mathematics with 371 proofs. Every culture has a version of it. Actually, uh, we believe that probably a thousand years before Mr. Pythagoras was born, it was proven by the Babylonians, or at least they used it. So it might have not been formally proved, but they had a use for it. Uh, Mr. Einstein himself used it and proved it when he was 12 years old with a beautiful proof as well using similar triangles. Leonardo da Vinci proved it, Euclid proved it, everybody proved it. Um, of course, it's credited to Mr. Pythagoras. Uh, and it's called the Gu 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 theorem in China, the Gu Gu theorem. <laughs> I hope I'm saying this right. 
So for the statement itself, and this could help you remember it, in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. So if you take the long side and you square it, it should be equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. Now remember the premise is that it's in a right angle triangle. So this only works if the triangle is right angled. If it's not, then Pythagoras' theorem doesn't work. Now this is a two-way statement, which means that if you can prove the theorem, then it's a right angle triangle. And if it's a right angle triangle, then the theorem works. Now there are some very common errors with Pythagoras' theorem and we're going to try and stay away from those. There are two common errors which I see all the time with students and we're going to try our best to not do these. The first common error, which is very, very classic, is to add the short side to the hypotenuse. So you'll see uh, a triangle like the 5, 11 and X triangle. So we're looking for the, the short length there, X. And you'll see work from a student which would be like 11 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. And, you know, the explanation would be, well, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The problem is the student is not adding the shorter sides here. They're adding the 5 squared, which is a short side, to the long side, 11 squared. And of course, that's not going to be equal to that length x because that length x is smaller than 11. Way smaller. So there's no way that if you were to take 11 and square it and add it to 5 and square it, that would be equal to the very small length x there, which is at the bottom of your screen. So instead, make sure that you write it in the right order. So you say 11 squared, so the long side is equal to 5 squared plus x squared. So the long side squared is equal to the short side 1 squared plus the short side 2 squared. And that would be the correct way to do this. So an easy fix for this problem is to always start with h squared equal. If you start with h squared equal, you can't make a mistake. So just do that. Every time you have a right angle triangle, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, whether you know the h, whether you know the a, whether you know the b, just start with h squared equal and then fill in the blanks. And if you're missing h, then it'll be pretty straightforward. If you're missing a short side, you might need to do one line of algebra and then you'll fall on your feet and you'll get the question right, which is good. Now, another common error is to forget to square root the answer. Of course, the answer needs to be square rooted since it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So it's important here to realize when you finish a question that you have a way to double check. If you have a triangle, like for example, the triangle depicted here, which is five and 12, and you end up with a long side, which is 169. Well, you might as well think five, 12, 169, that's completely impossible. It doesn't make any sense at all, right? 169 is way too big, but your calculations are correct. So what's wrong here is we forgot to use the square root function. Now, square rooting is not the same as dividing by two. Square rooting is finding the number which, if it was multiplied by itself, would give you 169. And the square root of 169 is 13. If you do 13 times 13, so 13 times itself, you'll find 169. Now for the work here, you see that we do h squared equal five squared plus 12 squared. So we start with h squared equal. So let's assume we're looking for the hypotenuse. Five squared, 25, uh, 12 squared, 144. So we'll do h squared equal 25 plus 144. And we get to this point here, which is h squared equals 169. And this is where you need to do the square root. Now, when you apply the square root function here, you can say it's plus or minus the square root of 169 because negative 13 times negative 13 is also 169. So there are two solutions to this question. When you get to h squared equal 169, it can actually be positive 169 square rooted or negative 169 square rooted. However, h is a length. And so we're not interested in the negative 13 value because negative lengths don't exist. So we're just going to use the positive 13 value, which is uh, the hypotenuse here. So the hypotenuse is 13. And that makes a lot more sense than h equal 169. So what applications do we have for Pythagoras' theorem? Well, imagine that you have two points here, the point 3 across and 2 up, and the point 7 across and 8 up. And you'd like to find the distance between th these two points. Well, it's not obvious how to do this, but luckily using Pythagoras' theorem and drawing a triangle, we might just be able to get away with this one and solve it. And sure enough, if we draw a triangle here, so the triangle would have a vertical length on the side, the short length would be from two to eight, which is six, and the horizontal length would be from three to seven, 
which is uh, four here. So the way that we find the, the vertical length and the horizontal length is we can do eight minus two, and you'll realize that that's like a rise of six. So the panel on the right hand side will be six. And then we can do seven minus three, which is a horizontal uh, length of four. And so therefore we have a triangle which has got lengths four and six. And with that information, we should be able to use Pythagoras theorem add these two together and find the long side, which is the hypotenuse. So in actuality, the distance between two points is the same as finding Pythagoras' theorem, assuming that the distance is the hypotenuse and that we're just drawing a triangle, which are going to be the two short sides. So it's a very common application. And in this case, we'll get 16 plus 36, which is 52. Now, 52 is not the distance between the two points. It's the square of the distance between the two points. And of course, to finish this question, you need to do the square root of 52. And the square root of 52 is 7.21. It's nice to round uh, to two decimal points whenever you do mathematical work. So if you had this question with the distance between two points, try and think about Pythagoras' theorem. It's a straight application of the theorem. You don't need to remember the distance formula. You just need to understand Pythagoras' theorem. So the wonderful thing about Pythagoras' theorem is you can extend it in 3D as well. So if you had a cube, for example, with length 5 and height 5 and depth 5, you could, technically speaking, do 5 squared plus 5 squared plus 5 squared, taking each length, squaring it, and then square rooting the result to find that uh, the distance here from one point of the cube to the other diagonal is 8.66. So Pythagoras' theorem works in two dimensions, but it's so good and so powerful that it also works in three dimensions. Can you believe it? Amazing, right? Not only does it work uh, in three dimensions, but you can still find the distance between two points in three dimensions. And so a very quick example here would be if you have the point 826 and the point 357, you can find the difference between eight and three, the difference between two and five, which is the y uh, difference, the difference between six and seven, and you can square all those differences and you can square root the result. And you will once again, using like a, a triangle in three dimensions, which is a little bit hard to draw, but easy to imagine, you could find the distance between the points A and B here in three dimensions, which is about 5.9. Isn't that incredible? And not only can you use Pythagoras' theorem in 2D, you can use it in 3D, you can use it in 4D, and you can use it in something a little bit mathematically abstract, you can use it in n dimensions. So we do talk in mathematics about n dimensions. So Pythagoras' theorem is a wonderful theorem and it's something that you can extend to as many dimensions as you can think about. So I hope you enjoyed this first video introducing Pythagoras' theorem and the history as well as what we can do with it or some of the applications rather because we can use it in so many different areas of mathematics. Make sure you like our channel, subscribe and follow us. Uh, the next part of these video series on Pythagoras' theorem will be work practice so that you can practice the theorem. So I'd encourage you to go and look at the next section so that you can practice some exercises. And we're going to work on some slightly harder ones in part three and part four so that we can work on Pythagorean triples and Math Olympiad materials. So if you really want to get good with Pythagoras' theorem, I recommend you go and do part two, part three, part four. This is a wonderful series and I'm so happy to be able to share it with you. Thank you for being here and see you on the next video. Bye bye.